The movie starts with a stunning view of a futuristic city lit up by bright neon lights and towering skyscrapers that seem to touch the sky. The scene is full of energy and activity, with a sense of excitement and innovation in the air. We're transported to a world of advanced technology and sleek design. As we move inside, we see a mysterious person hunched over a control panel, surrounded by flashing lights and digital screens. An alarm blares loudly, adding to the tension and sense of urgency. But the person doesn't flinch, their attention drawn to a strange, glow glowing ball nearby. The ball's surface pulses with an otherworldly energy, casting a mesmerizing glow. With a sense of purpose, the person reaches out and grabs the ball, as if unlocking its secrets. As they do, the energy emanating from the ball surges, casting an eternal glow that adds to the mystery and intrigue of the scene. We're drawn in, curious about what's happening and what's to come. As the person raises the ball, their gaze intensifies, and they channel a burst of electrical power from their eyes into the ball. The energy crackles and surges, illuminating the room with an otherworldly light that's both beautiful and unsettling. Suddenly, the ball levitates, hovering in midair before shooting off into space, disappearing into the unknown. The scene transitions to Berlin in 1998, where the city is bathed in darkness, with only the occasional streetlight piercing the night. In a cozy apartment, young Thomas is fast asleep in his bed, lost in a world of dreams. In his dreams, Thomas finds himself in a mysterious forest where the air is heavy with an eerie stillness. The trees loom above him, casting long, ominous shadows on the ground. As he walks through the forest, the sense of foreboding grows, and the tranquility is suddenly shattered by a blazing ball of fire that descends from the sky, casting an eerie glow over the landscape. Back in the real world, Thomas's mother gently shakes him awake, her voice a soothing balm to his frazzled nerves. Thomas, wake up, she says, her voice soft and reassuring. Thomas slowly comes to, his mind still reeling from the vivid images of his dream. As he sits up in bed, he's still trying to process the strange and unsettling dream he just had. But little does he know, something strange is happening in the real world. In Russia, a mysterious asteroid has suddenly fallen from the sky, landing in a body of water. The news of the event is just starting to break, and Thomas is about to hear about it. As he gets out of bed and starts his day, Thomas heads to the living room to watch the news while he works out, and that's when he hears the announcement. A six-meter object has been discovered on the lakeshore in Russia's Ural Mountains. The Russian Academy of Scientists releases a statement confirming that the mysterious object that fell from the sky was a meteor weighing 10 tons, which entered the Earth's atmosphere at incredible incredible speeds. Thomas, now a grown man, reflects on his past experiences with psychiatrists who were unable to diagnose any underlying issues, leading to a six-month stay in a mental institution. Despite being released due to financial constraints, the disturbing dreams persisted, leaving Thomas with a lingering sense of unease. As he sits in his apartment, Thomas can't help but recall the recurring flashbacks of his childhood dreams, where he felt like he was in two places at once. This sensation still haunts him, occasionally filling him with fear. Thomas's eyes wander to his computer screen, where he begins to browse through a series of videos, his expression a mixture of curiosity and intrigue. As he scrolls through his social media accounts, Thomas's attention is caught by a flurry of comments from a mysterious page called Deep Artelect. The comments are encoded in binary, and Thomas's curiosity gets the better of him. He decides to use an online binary to text converter to decipher the messages. As he translates the code, Thomas discovers that the comments contain information about the meteor incident that occurred in 2013. But what's even more astonishing is that the comments were posted in 2011, two years before the event. Thomas is left questioning the origin and purpose of Deep Artelect and how they could have possibly known about the meteor incident before it happened. Thomas's mind is racing with the implications of this discovery. Thomas's curiosity is piqued as he discovers more articles from Deep Artelect, realizing that they've been publishing content with uncanny predictions for some time. He's torn between thinking it's a glitch or a clever hoax and the possibility that they're actually reporting from the future. As he delves deeper into the mystery, Thomas feels a growing sense of urgency to uncover the truth behind Deep Artelect and their seemingly impossible predictions. Thomas decides to take a chance and reaches out to the owners of the Deep Artelect page, sending them a text message asking who they are and what their purpose is. He's both intrigued and startled by the response, as the individual claims to be a friend from the future. Thomas's mind is racing with questions as he engages in a conversation with this mysterious individual. He asks them what year they're from and is shocked to learn that they hail from the year 2390. The revelation sends Thomas's imagination into overdrive, and he's eager to learn more about this supposed friend from the future. As the conversation continues, Thomas is told that they will leave him a gift. His curiosity is piqued, and he hesitantly asks about the nature of the gift. The response is cryptic, as they provide him with a set of 
coordinates and instruct him to follow them to retrieve the gift. Thomas follows the coordinates and as he walks through the forest, he can't shake the feeling of deja vu. The trees, the path, everything seems eerily familiar, as if he's been here before. But this time it feels different, more real. He reaches the destination, a small house in the middle of the forest, and cautiously makes his way inside. As he explores the dimly lit rooms, his flashlight casts long shadows on the walls, making him feel like he's navigating a maze. He stumbles upon scattered pictures thrown across the floor, each one adding to the sense of intrigue and mystery surrounding the place. His attention is then drawn to a series of framed images depicting the human brain hanging prominently on the wall nearby. Thomas notices a set of electrodes resting on the table, accompanied by a cryptic note urging him to place them on his head. Intrigued yet hesitant, Thomas follows the instructions, placing the electrodes on his head as instructed. Suddenly, a surge of light emanates from the cables, enveloping him in a disorienting sensation. The room spins and Thomas feels himself overcome by a wave of dizziness and unease. As the sensation intensifies, Thomas starts to shake, his body trembling with an otherworldly energy. He tries to cry out, but his voice is muffled and his words are lost in the void. The world around him dissolves and Thomas feels himself being pulled into a vortex of light and sound. When Thomas slowly awakens from his unconscious state, he finds himself enveloped in the sterile white confines of a hospital room. The soft hum of medical equipment fills the air as he blinks away the remnants of sleep, his senses gradually returning to him. Nearby, a doctor stands vigil, their presence a comforting beacon of authority amidst the uncertainty. The doctor's words hang in the air like a challenge as Thomas's mind struggles to comprehend the enormity of what he's being told. Welcome, Thomas, to the year 2390, the doctor says, his voice calm and matter-of-fact. Thomas's eyes widen in shock as he confronts the doctor, demanding answers about his identity and the unsettling truth he's been confronted with. What do you mean? What's going on? He asks, his voice shaking with confusion and fear. The doctor reassures Thomas, explaining that he's still in the same place he was just 10 minutes ago, but now faces an extraordinary transformation. You've been chosen for a radical procedure, Thomas, the doctor says, his voice steady and calm. Your consciousness is being transferred into a new body, one that belongs to a man named Albert Kane. Thomas's mind reels as he tries to absorb the information being fed to him. Shock reverberates through his being, and he feels like he's been punched in the gut. Each revelation adds another layer of complexity to the situation, challenging his understanding of reality and his place within it. How is is this possible? Thomas asks, his voice barely above a whisper. Why would I agree to such a thing? The doctor's expression is sympathetic, but firm. You made this decision for yourself, Thomas, just hours ago. You were motivated by a selfless act that saved another's life. You chose to undergo this procedure to help someone else, and in doing so, you've given yourself a second chance at life. Thomas's mind races as he grapples with the implications of what he's learned. The weight of what happened to him settles heavily upon him, and he feels like he's drowning in a sea of uncertainty. But just as he thinks he's starting to understand, the conversation takes a surreal turn. The doctor reveals the existence of an alien technology discovered after a meteorite struck in Russia. This technology enables the transfer of life energy, allowing the resurrection of the dead. Thomas's eyes widen in horror as he realizes the implications of his barcode. He's not just a person, he's a vessel for someone else's consciousness. He's a host, a carrier of a life force that's not his own. The revelation shakes Thomas to his core, and he's left stunned and bewildered. Thomas's eyes widened in horror as he struggled to comprehend the idea that his life and identity were predetermined determined, mere numbers and a larger simulation. He felt like he was living in a nightmare, trapped in a world that was not his own. Determined to resist this fate, Thomas lashed out at the doctor, refusing to accept his imminent transformation. I won't let you do this to me, he shouted, his voice filled with desperation. In a desperate bid to escape, Thomas's actions in the simulation manifested in the real world as he began to strangle the doctor. Chaos ensued as someone intervened, injecting Thomas with a sedative, causing him to lose consciousness and bringing his tumultuous journey to a temporary halt. As Thomas lay unconscious, the figures and masks swiftly gathered the equipment and the progress made in the procedure, placing them carefully into a security box with practice deficiency. They exited the room, leaving Thomas behind in the simulation. An alarm blared as Thomas remained unconscious, but his journey was far from over. Meanwhile, the enigmatic figure from the opening scene reappeared.
appeared, standing over a man lying emotionless. With deliberate precision, they began the process of uploading something into the unconscious man. Their actions were shrouded in mystery and intrigue, and the scene pulsed with tension as the figure's intention remained unknown. Was this a new victim or a new pawn in their game? In Berlin, Germany, Dimension BR 326, Thomas reflected on his unique experience of existing in two places simultaneously. Despite the challenges and losses he'd faced, a part of him still remained resilient and determined. They may have damaged me, Thomas thought to himself, but they haven't destroyed everything. I've learned their ways, their technology. I'll use that to my advantage. With a newfound understanding of their ways and technology, Thomas vowed to take action. He would not go down without a fight. The movie then concluded as Thomas was seen studying abroad, meticulously connecting dots and analyzing his notes. His expression was one of focused determination, hinting at his imminent confrontation with those who had crossed him. The scene left the audience with a sense of anticipation, wondering what lay ahead for Thomas and his quest for justice. And with this, the movie comes to an end. Thanks for tuning in, guys.